Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. You're still watching the Daily Debate live on Nile TV International. And uh, once again, I would like to welcome my guest live here at the studio, Dr. Mohammed Rujdi. Uh, Dr. Mohammed, talking uh, once again about uh, the president's speech in front of the uh, UN General Assembly. Uh, how did you read the president's speech? And what were the most important messages that came through this speech? Actually, um in my humble opinion that this speech is covering a lot of things which the main focus for this which is uh, the sustainability uh, and our uh, our economic reform experience and how this affected our economy positively mm -hmm. i would like to start my conversation with our my interview today with you and our guests was one of the famous quotes for the american writer emerson uh, called emerson we don't inherit the earth from our ancestors we borrow it from our children yes. this is something which is crucial we have to little bit think about it we have to sustain this land for our children to benefit from it. Uh, as you know, one of the famous things that happened during, as far as I recall, of 1940s, within this uh, time, till 1950s, that we closed uh, so carry gold mine. Uh, the objective of this when they disclose that we will close it to keep it to our children yes the future we generations could, yes that was the during king farouk's uh, yes. rule yes yes um actually this is obje uh, the objective from this to have a better future for our children and the new coming generation they have to benefit from this Actually, uh, before going to the part of the speech, I would like to take you and our audience through the main focus for this speech and the conference, actually, mm -hmm. which is the sustainability. The sustainability is a crucial thing. Mm -hmm. I would like to, uh, to let people know more about the sustainability. Sustainability definition in general is meeting our needs without uh, compromising the ability of the future generation that they have the accessibility to uh, to access and benefit from their country mm -hmm. and there are many types of uh, actually of sustainability one of the main focus which is financial sustainability the financial sustainability actually is about being able uh, to be there for benefit uh, for beneficiaries in the long term mm -hmm. to benefit from for a long term actually and if you would like to focus on this speech that we are delivering a positive signal to the global community that Egypt is going in on track mm -hmm. and we are focusing uh, on sustainability as you know there is a global and our audience there is a global trend now for focusing on sustainability and decrease our carbon footprint yes. this is a new era mm -hmm. for the community and one of the m previous conferences that mr president cc uh, already uh, attended in paris which is the climate change conference yes this is a global trend how we have a limited resources nowadays mm -hmm. how to best utilize those resources in an efficient way this is what the main positive uh, the main positive thing that this conference is focusing on in addition to that i i was so proud when i'm seeing the president cc and egypt return it back to play its vital role in the middle east and how we be how now we be influencer to influence the global opinion mm -hmm. you can imagine and our audience yes right well uh, president sisi uh, was keen to localize the sustainable development goals and integrate them into its policies and programs now how far did egypt succeed in reaching this goal Actually, I would like to start this point with you and our audience, uh, starting the de-evaluation. Mm -hmm. One, the economic reform in general started with the de-evaluation. One of the most crucial and important 
thinks, in my humble opinion, that this is the bravest decision that we took. Uh, we keep it, to, we, are, we are avoiding, actually, we were avoiding to take this decision for long term, for more than 30 years. Mm -hmm. uh, starting the de-evaluation, actually, uh, it was a crucial thing. The government uh, played uh, with uh, Ministry of Finance and Central Bank of Egypt in a smart way that lead that all global organization and financial institutions admitted that the Egypt played this in a professional and smart way. Mm -hmm. They started, actually, the government was uh, increasing the interest rate. For what is the reason for increasing the interest rate? The first thing to absorb the liquidity from mm -hmm. the market mm -hmm. is an, there's excess of liquidity, actually. And this is ne negatively impact the pricing. Yes. That the street man can realize it easily. Mm -hmm. The inflation, the inflation after the devaluation reached it to 33 percent. Yes, you could imagine that. How to absorb this inflation? Mm -hmm. The Monetary Policy Committee, the MPC, with coordination with Ministry of Finance and Government, all all the government are focusing to absorb this. They increase the interest rate to each like. 20% in public banks, as far as I recall, mm -hmm. uh, to absorb, to encourage people to uh, get, to put or deposit their money in banks. Mm -hmm. This is the first step to do that. Yes. And then after that, they played in a smart way, as I told you, and this is, by the way, one of the things that IMF, uh, uh, they tried to make it in a loud voice and say it in a loud voice this is a good exp this is a good thing that egypt done they played with the inverted yield curve i would like to take you and our audience with the meaning of the inverted yield curve mm -hmm. now if you have a positive outlook for the economy actually what you will do you shouldn't pay or increase the cost of debt for a long term yes. for that reason the government decided and the MPC and the monetary of uh, the, uh, the Ministry of Finance, they decided to do what? To let the short term have high interest rate rather than the long term. Mm -hmm. We raised up that if you are putting your money for 10 years, for example, mm -hmm. you will get higher interest rate. Yes. But for short term or middle term, actually, you will yes. get lower. You get less interest rate. Yes. Okay. And what happened, they did the different thing. For short term, they paid higher interest rate. Mm -hmm. Why they did that? Because if you have a positive outlook and you have a vision, mm -hmm. what you'll do, you will not let the, the actually the balance of payment be incremental cost of debt mm -hmm. without meaning. Mm -hmm. You are trying to decrease the cost of debt. Actually, I would like to share with you and our audience some figures about the cost of that. The cost of that was reaching around uh, records, uh, around 110% uh, mm -hmm. uh, from GDP, uh, from GDP. Yes. After three years, it decreased by 20%. Mm -hmm. Look what happened. Mm -hmm. And the interest rate gradually decreased to meet uh, what the government is trying to do in addition to uh, the, 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 the deposit base mm -hmm. in the banking industry increased around from as far as I recall from 19 billion to each more than 40 uh, uh, sorry from 19 trillion to uh, more than uh, 40 trillion yes Right. Uh, well, um, how do you see the impact of Egypt's participation in the United Nations General Assembly uh, in emphasizing Egypt's leading role uh, on the Arab, regional and international levels? Uh, actually, as I started my point, uh, trying to highlight that we are so proud that Egypt returned back to play its vital role. Actually, Egypt was focusing on uh, 
2030 agenda for sustainability. Yes. The main pillars for this or the main objectives for those for this agenda, which is we have eight main pillars or objectives, mm -hmm. improving the quality of life, standard the living of the Egyptian citizens. And we took many steps for that. One of the most important programs that the government did for something like that, which is a program of the careful and the Karamo. Karamo, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The government played the mainly a smart tool to how to allocate the subsidy to let it go for low-income people mm -hmm. and uh, to decrease the poverty. Yes. You can imagine right. that? Right. Well, uh, still with what you're saying, sir, uh, Egypt is one of the countries, of course, uh, that has developed a long-term strategic plan to achieve sustainable development and the vision of 2030. Now, uh, how far do you think Egypt has achieved this goal? I would like, uh, if you can, uh, let, give me a time to share with the audience about some figures like uh, one of the main objectives of sustainability is to decrease in poverty mm -hmm. and uh, create jobs, yes. increasing the unemployment rate. Yes, sure. Uh, and this is a crucial thing. Um, it's a good plan, mm -hmm. but let me, I can say one of the famous quotes for one of the famous strategic science was called Henry Mintzberg. It is easy to plan, mm -hmm. but it is difficult to implement. Actually, the challenge here uh, at that time, there at that time, which is the implementation. Mm -hmm. uh, the government played on many things. They started with education, mm -hmm. this and then health, mm -hmm. uh, those are crucial things to let people uh, focus and doing sustainability in an efficient way. Mm -hmm. If I would like to share with you something about uh, the figures, the education, uh, the education budget increased uh, by around 65%. As far as I recall, uh, it was like 40 uh, billion in 2014-15 reached to 65 billion yes the growth rate which is 65 percent mm -hmm. and this is something crucial in addition to despite the fact of pandemic we increased uh, we increased the health budget you could imagine that yes and despite the fact of pandemic and the negative growth on the and some uh, many developed countries which is sure. zero or negative mm -hmm. growth, mm -hmm. actually we achieved 2%. Mm. And the un one of the crucial things that the sustainability is focusing on it, which mm. is the unemployment rate. I can share with you that the employment rate percentage reached to 13.4% yes. in 2013. Mm -hmm. It reached currently to 7.4%, almost 50% decrease. Yes. Yes, good this news. Of the, yeah, this is mm -hmm. one of the most uh, important thing. Mm -hmm. Actually, we are bearing the fruits of the economic reform. Mm -hmm. Still with the economic reform program, uh, how did the economic reform program reflect on Egypt's classification and competitiveness uh, index? Actually, it's a good question, yeah. I believe uh, those, uh, this is a good opportunity to discuss to the audience and the Egyptian citizen how the global community are seeing Egypt. Mm -hmm. One, uh, there's uh, many financial institutions, rating financial institutions like Standard and Poor's and uh, Moody's, mm -hmm. they classified us as an, uh, our economy as an B plus with positive outlook. You can imagine mm -hmm. what we did in terms of decreasing the unemployment rate, decreasing the in inflation rate, which is, as I told you and our audience later, the inflation rate to reach to 33%. Currently, it's around 5.5%. 5, 5 yes. And this is reflected on many things, by mm -hmm. the way. In addition to uh, the, the mega project that the government are working on it, Mm -hmm. uh, renewable energy, and I would like to talk about it in details, but 
uh, not now actually uh, one of the most important things the mega projects that the infrastructure the new airports like Sphinx, canal trace to diversify actually our gdp structure yes and we shifted we changed we are trying to change our gdp structure to focus on service and technology. As you and our audience know, the GDP structure consists of three main things, yes. which is agriculture, industry, and services. Mm -hmm. in, developed countries, in developed countries, actually, the service structure and technology are taking the largest part because it's more profitable. Mm -hmm. You could imagine yes. this is one of the most strategic things that the government are focusing on it. Mm -hmm. This is how to build the country. We are trying to give example for any country, for any developed, uh, developing country that aiming uh, or ambitious to uh, do uh, the economic reform and uh, to be, to influence uh, on the global opinion to do like Egypt. Yes, well, uh, Egypt has placed its, uh, the axis of sustainable development at the forefront of its national priorities. But at the same time, it did not neglect uh, climate change and uh, its repercussions and, of course, the environmental challenges. How do you read this? Actually, uh, thank you for this question. As you know, uh, as I told you previously and our audience later, uh, that uh, we are focusing on renewable energy. Mm -hmm. We are doing many projects, mega projects, to generate electricity with renewable resources. Uh, we are focusing now to replace uh, cars with uh, cars that depend on electricity, solar, uh, solar mechanism, solar system mechanism. We are trying to focus on energy with clean or green way. Mm -hmm. This is one of the crucial things because this climate, our, our, our community our, the, or the earth, we have to keep it. As I told you and I started my uh, interview with you today or the episode today, mm -hmm. that we have to keep uh, this uh, planet for our children as sure. we are borrowing it from them. Sure. Well, um, uh, sir, just allow me to go to this short break and we'll be right back to resume our discussion on sustainable development and the UN General Assembly in its 76th session. Stay tuned. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, and still with our discussion on the UN General Assembly and Sustainable Development Goals. Uh, Dr. Mohammed, uh, I would like you to tell us more about the Sustainable Development Goals that Egypt is focusing on. I mean, we have eight goals here in Egypt that we are focusing on. What are these goals? Actually, as you said, we are focusing here in Egypt in, uh, at eight main goals, which is the first one to improve the quality uh, of life for the Egyptian citizen, mm -hmm. which is something which is fair enough. We have to realize the straight man actually would like to realize the impact of this. Uh, one of the most important things, as I told you and our audience, which is uh, uh, program Takaful and the Karama. Yes. Yes. And the second objective, which is social inclusion. In addition to the third objective, which is most crucial and important thing, uh, to diversify economy, to have a diversified economy. Mm -hmm. One of the famous quotes or idioms for that, that we shouldn't or don't put all the eggs in one basket. Mm -hmm. We have to diversify the economy. Yes. As I told you uh, before, uh, uh, before the report actually, that uh, the GDP structure was focusing on many things, services, uh, agriculture, industry. To enhance the, the GDP structure or improve it, we have to focus on service and we have to diversify. Mm. Not we, sh we shouldn't focus on tourism. As some countries, by the way, European countries, and hypothetically they are developed countries, they are focusing on tourism. Yeah. After the pandemic, what happened? 
the, the tourism went down. Actually. Went down. Uh, yeah. And this has impacted the GDP growth. Yes. And one of the most important things mm -hmm. that the G GDP growth in Egypt reached around 2%, mm -hmm. despite the fact of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. You know how the sustainability and diversifying the economy is m the most important thing. Mm -hmm. The fourth objective, which is knowledge, innovation, and re scientific research, my humble opinion, opinion if you would like to build a country you have to focus on education mm -hmm. and health mm -hmm. this is the most important and what about thing. scientific research you mentioned scientific research now uh, yes it's, it's also very crucial i think yes it's crucial and uh, by the way that the government increased the budget for uh, the budget for scientific research and education mm -hmm. uh, by 65 percent yes this is one of the most important thing, in addition to integrated and sustainable ecosystem mm -hmm. to go green and to decrease little bit uh, our carbon footprint and uh, focusing on digital transformation and using uh, the digital things. As you know that the majority, many chains currently are trying to change their normal shops Mm. to be online. Mm -hmm. uh, the th sixth uh, objective, which is governance of a state and community institution, and the seventh objective, which is Egyptian peace and security, which mm -hmm. is the most important thing, <coughs> security. As you know, one of the most important things for Maslow pyramid hierarchy of needs, it comes after saving everything food and beverage and everything security. security sure this is the most crucial thing mm -hmm. and the last objective which is strengthening egyptian leadership and there are many programs that president sisi is focusing on to uh, let the to empower the uh, to empower youth and mm -hmm. women to have <coughs> a good leadership and this yes. is how country are building leaders sure uh, sir, how do you uh, assess investing in more sustainable uh, sectors such as uh, combating uh, climate change, uh, artificial intelligence, uh, social inclusion, and of course, digital transformation? Yeah, it's a good question, really. This is one of the most trendy things uh, nowadays, hmm. the digital transformation. Uh, as you know, one of the most important things uh, that Oh, after the pandemic, uh, that most of the chains, governments are trying, or companies are trying to change the model from the traditional model to the digital model. I would like to share one of the comics that American people are discussing it, or they are they are saying it between themselves. Uh, the question, they are questioning who is leading the digital transformation in your company. Mm -hmm. The answers, which is CEO, CFO, COVID-19. Yes. The answer was COVID-19, actually. was one of the... Yes. Yeah. Our lifestyle and behavior changed this pandemic. Specifically, yeah, yes. after the pandemic. Yes. For that reason, the government has its own vision to mm -hmm. change the majority of things to the digital era. Mm -hmm. and this is, by the way, reflected positively uh, on many things that you can. The fi first, financial inclusion, that you couldn't do anything outside the banking industry. Everything should be monitored in a proper and efficient way. The payment methodology should be efficient as the speed of, mm -hmm. the, of this. And this is positive reflected on everything, mm -hmm. tax and decreased, by the way, I can share with you that the, the deposit uh, base in, uh, increased, almost, mm -hmm. uh, almost doubled uh, mm -hmm. in Egypt due to that people are putting their money in banks to, uh, to try to uh, speed the, their process in addition to increasing the interest rate, the digital transformation, uh, the new era for for the world mm -hmm. sure 
Well, uh, we've talked about uh, digital transformation and uh, the impact of COVID-19 on digital transformation, of course. Talking about COVID-19 and its impact on the Egyptian economy, uh, how did the e Egyptian economy survive uh, through the uh, past two, three years with the uh, COVID-19? Actually, it is uh, challenging to survive the, during the COVID. As mm -hmm. I told you and our audience, there are many developed countries, they couldn't be that. And they are focusing mainly on, like some countries that are focusing on tourism, some countries are focusing on uh, entertainment services, many mm -hmm. things, but they change <clears throat> it, uh, they couldn't, uh, be that and they uh, achieved negative GDP growth. Egypt, the, what happened in Egypt is something uh, different. What happened? The government are focusing, they have a vision. They are focusing to diversify the economy. They mm. are not focusing just in tourism, not in uh, FDIs. They are uh, focusing on many things. Uh, part of it, tourism, FDI, services, agriculture, industry, many mm. things. In addition to, they are focusing to, they are focusing on trying to reach stable economy with a different mechanism. Mm -hmm. For that reason, we achieved a growth rate, GDP growth rate, which reached 2%. Mm. Uh, those tactical or small things that done by government positively affected our economy yes. in an efficient way. Mm -hmm. By the way, this is lead that many institutions, international institutions like Standard and Poor's and Moody's, they rated us as an uh, B plus with positive outlook for yes. Egypt, yes. for our economy. Mm -hmm. You could imagine that. Yes, we survived. Yeah. Uh, so talking about Africa, the African continent and the sustainable development goals, there was a, a consensus uh, on the international level on specific government uh, and developmental goals uh, of the United Nations. Now at the same time the African continent realized the importance of formula formulating its own vision uh, and meeting its people's needs. How do you see uh, this and to what extent would the international community benefit from supporting uh, this development framework? Actually, one of the most important things and uh, it let me proud and happy that Egypt returned back to play its main role in mm -hmm. Africa as this is the normal extension uh, for Egypt. Uh, actually, one of the most important things that uh, Egypt and uh, are focusing on it, which is 2063 African Agenda mm -hmm. for Sustainability. Yes. Uh, and by the way, we are not the majority of the country, European countries, uh, are focusing on Egypt. Those are on focusing on Africa. Mm -hmm. This Africa is uh, reached by many fortunes, and they have a lot of treasure. And at the same time, the population ages, the majority of the population age in the area of, uh, they are youth and they can build. And they are the European countries considering us as an emerging uh, market for them. Mm -hmm. They can, if they, uh, they have the ability to uh, produce many products and their population are saturated. They are trying to uh, export, uh, to import, sorry, those goods and services to African countries. Mm -hmm. Now we are working as an African countries together to return back and try to work to just not uh, depend on importing goods and services, to change those goods and services or the raw materials mm -hmm. to manufacture it and try to export it to the European and all European, Asian, American countries, every country around the world. I believe in my humble opinion, if we can do just uh, more alliances and strategic uh, partnership with the African countries and 
I hope one day that we have African market yes. and the African United currency mm -hmm. that will lead to uh, a dramatic change mm -hmm. uh, for the power of the African content in the world mm -hmm. and will be in a different uh, So you think uh, having a unified currency for yes. the African uh, continent would help a lot in uh, the exchange of trade and uh, uh, inter-African uh, economic uh, cooperation? Yeah, yes, I do agree with you. Those are most important thing and to remove borders, mm -hmm. to integrate mm -hmm. and to uh, to don't depend actually on just uh, exporting uh, the raw materials. Yes. And the uh, developed countries are manufacturing them and mm -hmm. selling back to us. Mm -hmm. We have the raw materials. Mm -hmm. We can learn. We are not, we shouldn't invent the wheel. We have to learn from other experience mm -hmm. and don't invent the wheel and to introduce those products after manufacturing them mm -hmm. because those are our raw materials. Yes, well, um, I would like to thank you very much for joining us, uh, Dr. Mohamed Rojdi, economic and banking expert and lecturer at Cairo University. Many thanks for your insight and many, many thanks for joining us live here on Nile TV International. Thank you, for, uh, thank you and for Daily Debate team and our audience and I wish you uh, have a nice uh, evening. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, uh, dear viewers. That brings us to the end of uh, this edition of the Daily Debate. Many thanks for watching and stay tuned for more coming up here on Nile TV International.